Nigerians, who bewitched you? So in October 2020, I still have to explain why I didn't vote for President Jonathan or President Buhari in 2015. Why are the Nigerian youth looking for who to blame for Nigeria's woes in 2020? Anyone except the people in government, actually. Is it cowardice or ignorance? Omoyele Shore, a presidential candidate in the 2019 elections, called Bonaboy, a Nigerian musician, to really be like Fela, who Bonaboy claims was his biggest inspiration in his music, by joining the Revolution Now protest that Omoyele Shore was calling for October 1st, asking for reversals of fuel price and electricity tariffs. Bonaboy replied to Ure saying he didn't trust politicians because it is easy to love and support Fela now that Fela has been dead 23 years. Young people then decided to use the opportunity to call Shore a traitor, saying he supported President Buhari against President Jonathan in 2015, only to contest against President Buhari in 2019. I always ask, who has bewitched Nigerians? Is it who I supported in any election that should determine how I hold governments accountable? Should asking for good governance become a taboo because I supported and voted for Professor Remy Shonaya in 2015 and refused to support the APC in 2019? I don't get it. Every citizen has a right to vote and be voted for. Why then do we keep on attacking people for supporting whoever they supported that we believe is a failure now in government? Why don't we use the same energy to face the people in government and demand that they do better? Who are the Nigerian youth waiting for next? To be Nigeria's Messiah, because that was what they told us in 2015 that President Buhari was going to be Nigeria's Messiah. While they focus on their, all their energies on sports betting or reality TV. You know, I've always said it that if only Nigerian youths could channel that same energy and focus they give to reality TV shows, to politics, hey, we'll have reached the promised land by now. Their excuse is that when you vote for reality TV um, characters, mm -hmm. you know your that vote your counts. vote counts. <laughs> no, but really, no, but that's not the, it's in everywhere, it's in everywhere, in most countries of the world, even... Um, what you do, you create mentorship to encourage youth participation. Right. Mm -hmm. But here we intentionally don't create mentorship. And then um, you also find out that, that, you know, you create distractions. Mm. There are youths who are interested in politics, but unfortunately they're not the one who should be interested in politics. Mm. And, and so that's why if you go to local political meeting, you meet some young people there, those you would ordinarily would refer to as a miscreant. They rise up from there to become leaders to become senators. But those who ordinarily should be interested will not be interested. And then what they do is this uh, mentality of, I am better than you. Mm. And so if you supported uh, President Buhari before, you don't have a right to criticize him now. Imagine. After all, we told you then you should have seen it. Mm. So why are you criticizing him now? It's, you know, suffer him. And then you sit down, they fold your hands, you are doing nothing. And we all suffer in silence. Yes. I tell people consistently, we are the ones in opposition not the APC, not the PDP. Mm. I, I, I said it last week, and I'm saying it again, a do election. You expected all the big politicians, including Showare, to go to a do to support their candidates. You know, or even if he couldn't go because of uh, the court um, order against him, let the party, you know, members. Uh, members go and rally around, but we're all debating APC, PDP. And then it, it became so obvious that Really, what you have are platforms. All other political parties are platforms. True. Where people who are driven from these major parties go to seek, you know, fortune or, or political office. It, or it's, political it's, relevance. Yes, it's quite unfortunate. And so they keep, intentionally keep the youth out of it because the day they, the youth will realize, the uprising will be massive. And that's why even Nance now. True. Their own is been how to get over. money. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but now this has been think, bought over me, and seen it me, on think, national TV. Yeah. Bought over. I think uh, the youth. Absolutely useless. The youth, even though we talk about uh, this thing all the time, that uh, the youth are preoccupied with, uh, you know, this. Uh, 
entertainment. issues of entertainment, and then entertainment and all is that. good. But if you go all but, over the world, mm -hmm. you know, people, it is people's prerogative to decide what they want to do. Mm. But for the benefit of doubt, why they enmesh themselves in entertainment and all that, they should also take the same strength and the same energy to the era, arena of politics too. You have to adjust and then your dissipate them. Otherwise, they won't just stand up. Yeah, no, that, that, that's what I'm saying. But if you look at it now, participation, youth participation in politics is increasing by the day. So we are getting that awareness and we're, we're gradually it's getting to that It's not increasing point. exponentially. I, I, it I, I, increases. I, 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 yeah, so but in growth is systematic. Say do. Yes. Um, I have. I say do. Have somebody say you are a youth. Uh, <laughs> somebody no, is always telling you sense something. Sense of entertainment <laughs> we have in Nigeria that you feel that you know leadership should just be placed on your lap. No, you have you have to struggle for it, right? Youth, if you want leadership, you have to start working from now. I believe that people like uh, Fela Durotoy made a very good outing. I mean, he should, but he, the approach, the strategy, in my own opinion, was wrong. He should have started from maybe the Senate. Create, go there and, you know, sponsor bills and people will get to know what he's doing and then move. Moving to presidency, considering the dynamics of the country today, it's very, very hard. We have a population that is largely youthful and yet we cannot put a representative within that age bracket in government, then there's a problem. There's well, a big right? problem. Too the leadership speaking. we have today, the leadership we have, they say, is a reflection of us. A lot of us sit down, we criticize this government. Go to your local government and see the rots there. How many people pay taxes? How many people even support help government to do the things they're supposed to. We criticize, but we don't realize that we are all do. part and parcel. The local government is intentionally made If you want to hold somebody yeah. accountable, yeah. you check we, yourself first. Are you doing the right thing? Are you a model citizen? The, the country in itself. Yes. We should... The yeah. country in itself is a local government. The president is local yes. government chairman. <laughs> the, 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 Again, the president politics, must inspire confidence. Politics is very expensive in Nigeria, and poverty is weaponized. So the young people who join political parties, if they're not miscreants, if you're educated, you don't want to waste your life. You know, just carrying somebody's briefcase up and about, which is why they go into entertainment where they know that they yeah, can. It pays them. Where there is no violence. One, one hit, you make millions. You know. Why? But it is time to finally draw the curtains on this week's episode of The Advocate. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, also hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous podcasts, please go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this same station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Zie, zie. Say do. Bye bye. Zie, zie. Bye, say do. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.